Once again, I am Mr. Skinner, and I am not your friend. I am your teacher, not your buddy, not your little brother, not your uncle, not your cousin. When I tell you to do something, you have to do it. I do not pal around. Teachers and students are not supposed to be friends. You're going to work bell to bell in here every single day of the school year. There are no free days. You will not end up in the band room this period. You will not end up in the library this period. You will not be in the office this period. You will be in this room for math. If you forget something somewhere else, when you come here, it's gone. You can't leave the room to go get it. You don't leave the room to go anywhere. No phones until the last five minutes of class. If you have a cell phone, the sound must be off, and it's got to be off your desk and put away underneath the desk somewhere. Don't have it in your lap looking at it, texting your boyfriend or girlfriend or telling your mother to come get you because you're tired and you want to go home. We're not going to do that. Turn it off and keep it out of sight until the last five minutes. If you choose to use your phone, then you are choosing to lose it for 24 hours. It will be gone and you'll get it back the next school day, which is, if that's a Friday, that could be bad. Assign seats. This is where you're going to seat, or sit unless I change you. You bring your own pencils and paper. Don't bring pens. I don't want to see pens. Pencils and paper. If you don't bring it, then you're going to have to borrow it from somebody else. I'm not giving it to you. If you come to me and tell me nobody else has anything to give you and you still don't have anything, I'm going to tell you you should have been prepared. I'm not giving you anything. It's not my obligation to buy you stuff to bring to school. When you enter the room, you must stop back there at the orange bucket and pick up a little stack of papers from the orange bucket. You will use these to write your answers and deliver them to me up here for practice problems and warm-up quizzes. On those papers, you only write the answer to the problem and your last name. If this is the piece of paper and the answer is 5, and this is what you bring me, I can't see that. And I'm going to wave you on through. It's not going to count. If it's five, fill up the whole paper and put your last name visible at the bottom so that I can learn these names right off the bat. There are no textbooks. They are useless. There, is, there are new standards now. It's called Common Core. The graduation test is gone. These textbooks will be of no use to you for that, so I'm giving you everything you need each day. Like I said before, it's recorded on video, so you can go back and watch this as many times as you want. You can have the entire class on your cell phone, iPad, laptop, desktop, computer, whatever. You can, you can look at the whole year for that. You must keep a three-ring binder in this class. You have eight weeks to get a three-ring binder. They're $2.50 at Walmart. In that binder, you must keep all of the work from your practice problems and warm-up quizzes in there on notebook paper. Remember, you turn the answers in on those little sheets. You must also keep homework tests, quizzes, and after-test assignments in there and anything else that we do. It's worth a 1,000 points. It's checked one time each nine weeks. You have it or you don't. I know by looking at a notebook that if it is this, for those watching on video, they can't see this. That notebook has what it's supposed to have in it. This does not. Which notebook gets a thousand? This one. Now, if they both look like this, one zero and one is a thousand. How do I know the difference? When I open this one up, it has all the work. When I open this one up, it has 800 pages of blank notebook paper. I know the difference between blank paper and paper that has stuff on it. So you can't just shove filler paper in there. There is to be no blank papers in your notebook when you turn it in. Tests are 1,000 points. They're about once a week. You only get one time to take each test, so study hard for each test. There are no do-overs. If you bomb it, you bomb it. So if you need extra help, you can come in here six period during intervention and get help. If it comes time for a test and you tell me when I hand you the test I don't know what I'm doing, I'm going to look at my list and it's going to show that you haven't been in here for intervention. 
So if you haven't asked any questions in class and you haven't come to intervention for help, I'm just going to tell you tough. If you want to come for help, I'll help you all you want, six period. Sometimes I have two in here, sometimes I have 20, but everybody gets help that wants it. So if you want help, then you should be getting help. If you miss a test or a quiz because you are absent, then you will take it during six period. You can only take one per day, and you must give me one day notice so that I can make up the test. If you miss a test, the makeup test that I'm going to make for you specifically is going to be shorter and more difficult. So if you plan on missing a day because we're taking a test, then you need to know you're going to get a test that's more difficult than the one you would have taken when you came in. And the reason you can only take one per day is because some have difficulty coming to school and they miss weeks at a time, and so they may owe me three tests. You can only do one per day. I am not interested in personal conversations. There will be no gossiping in here. I don't want to hear about boyfriends and girlfriends. Even if you're not talking to me, don't talk to somebody else so loudly that everybody can hear something that has no business being in this room. It is time to get going. The next time you will have a break in this class will be next May. Warm-up quiz. Answer the problem I put on the screen. Put the answer only and your last name on it and come by through here. Walk by this desk. Show me your paper with your name on it clearly. If I say your name, you got it right. If I say no, you had it wrong. There's the first one. Answer it. Bring it up here and show me. On this problem, multiplication comes before addition and subtraction. So you must do 9 times 2 first to get 18. And then add those together to get 21. If you did 3 plus 9 and then times by 2, that's why you ended up with 24. Always do multiplication and division before addition and subtraction. Try this one. Bring it up here. On this problem, 10 divided by 2 is 5. You have to do that first. And then you do 18 minus 5 to get 13. If you did 18 minus 10 to get 8 and then divide it by 2, you would have ended up with 4. How you came up with negative 13 in some instances, I do not know. Number 3, try this one. Bring it up. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 8 divided by 2 is 4. You do multiplication and division before you do addition and subtraction. Answer should be 9. If you did this to get 5 and then added that to get 13 and divided by 2, that's why you had 6.5, which is not right. Number 4, show me this one. Multiplication and division come before addition and subtraction, so you have 6 divided by 2 and 5 times 2 to do first. 6 times 2 is 3, or 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 5 times 2 is 10. 12 plus 3 is 15, minus 10 is 5. Last one, bring this one up. These will go by quicker as the days go along. 2 times 3 is 6, 11 minus 6 is 5, plus 4 is 9. Pick a number from 1 to 5 and drop it off on this desk facing me. The, the winning number today is 2. There's a whole new set of objectives for everybody throughout the country this year. It's called Common Core. And the first objective you're going to go over today is Algebra 1 in Q1, Numbers and Quantity. You do not have to write this down because I will post it on YouTube so you can look at it there. And I will be putting them around the room as the days go along. The first one for today is to use units as a way to understand problems and to guide the solution of multi-step problems. Choose and interpret units consistently in formulas. Choose and interpret the scale and the origin in graphs and data displays. So after we finish, you should be able to calculate unit conversions and recognize units given or needed to solve a problem. Lessons don't last just one day. This one may be two or three. If you know this, you'll do well. If you don't, write it down. 12 inches in a foot, 3 feet in a yard, and 36 inches in 
a yard. You need notebook paper on your desk because that's part of taking notes and it's also what you show your work on for the practice problem and you're turning your answers in on the small pieces of paper. John has five boards that are 36 inches long. Sally has seven boards that are 20 inches long. And Greg has six boards that are 15 inches long. If all of the boards are placed end to end, then what is the total length of the boards? Pick it apart one step at a time. John has five of them that are 36 inches long each. In order to figure out how long John's boards are, what would I do with 5 and 36? Multiply them together, yeah, so 36 times 5 for John. Now Sally has 7 of them that are 20 inches long. I would multiply 20 by 7 to find out the length of Sally's boards. And Greg has six that are 15 inches. So I would multiply 15 by six. Now you can go back through and multiply each of these. You'll find that 36 times five is 180. 20 times seven is 140. And 15 times six is 90. So I have the total length of each individual person in there. But what do I need to do to find the length of everybody's boards all together? Add them up, yes. Yeah. So now you need to add 180, 140, and 90. And when you do that, 180 and 140 is 320. And when you add 320 and 90, you get 410. Did anybody else get 410 when they added those up? All right, so you're on the right track. 410 is what units? Inches, yes. Now, if I told somebody that I have 410 inches of boards, would they be able to get a visualization of how long that is? What should we change inches to? Feet, yes. What must I do to inches to change it to feet? Divide it by 12. So do that on your calculator. Divide uh, 410 by 12. Does it come out evenly or is it a decimal? So you can use the two numbers to the left of the decimal point, which are 34. We know we have at least 34 feet, but we have that decimal, which means there were inches left over. To figure out how many inches were left over, you're going to multiply the number of feet you just found, 34 by 12 and you come up with what number? 408. What's the difference between 408 and 410? 2. So that means I have 2 inches left over. Once again we divided 410 by 12 and came up with 34 point something. We wrote the 34 down but we can't use that decimal. So what we did is we multiplied that 34 backwards by 12 to get 408. And the difference between 408 and 410 is 2. So that means there were 2 inches left over. Now if I told someone I had 34 feet, 2 inches worth of boards, would they have a better understanding than 410 inches? Yes. Can we do something else with this to dwindle it down to a larger unit? Yes, make it into yards. What do I do to convert feet into yards? Divide it by 3. That's right. So if I divide 34 by 3, is it even or is it a decimal? It's a decimal, but we can still use that number to the left of the decimal point. What is that number? 34 divided by 3 is what? 11 point something, yeah. So that 11 is yards, and the point something is what's left over for feet. What's the decimal that's left over? Point 0.3 is what as a fraction? 
one third, and what's one third of three feet? One foot. One foot. So there's nothing you really have to do. Here is a trick for you. If you are dividing feet by three to change into yards, if the decimal comes out to be 0.3, then it's one foot left over. If it's 0.6, it's two feet left over. And there's nothing else that you could have when you divide by three. How many inches did I have left over? Yep, that's it. Your answer? That's not our bell. Ours comes up at 17 or 18 after. The final answer is 11 yards, 1 foot, and 2 inches. Are there any questions about this problem? Practice problems are worth 10 points. Make sure you write down all the necessary information you need. Not necessarily word for word, because that's a lot to write. Just write down the information you need. And uh, when I get three or four answers up here on the desk, I'm going to change the screen to bonus, so those that are finished can work on bonus problems. All I need from you is to show the work on notebook paper, but bring your answer up only with your last name on it and leave it on the table. Joyce, that would be 16 times 6. Ben is 12 times 30. And then we're going to have Janet for 10 times 7. So that would be 96, 360, and 70. We must add all of those together. That is 430 plus 96, which is 526. Did anybody have 526? All right, you're good so far, but if that was your final answer, then you, you've missed it. You have to take it to feet next. So 526 divided by 12 is 43 feet, but it comes out to be a decimal. So multiply that 43 by 12, it's 516. What's the difference between 516 and 526? 10, so it's 10 inches. We still need to convert to yards. So 43 feet, and converting that to yards, you will divide 43 by 3 and come up with 14 yards, but, the, but it's a decimal. So multiply that 14 by 3 and come up with 42. What's the difference between 42 and 43? 1, so it's 1 foot. And we had how many inches? 10 inches, so it is 14 yards, 1 foot, and 10 inches. Answer to this problem is 9 plus 20 minus 1, which is 29 minus 1. That'll be 28. Now, needless to say, I don't expect you to copy all this down right here. But it will be on the internet at SkinnerMoney.com at 2 p.m. today. So if you have internet, you have nothing to worry about. You just get it off your phone or your computer at home. If you have a phone here with you, you now's the time that you can get it out and you can take a picture of the screen if you want. Multiple pictures. Top, middle, bottom if you want to. Whatever you have to do to make it clear, you can do it that way. 